Hello and welcome to this tutorial um, on subsurface scattering in Random and Maya. I just want to clear something up from my previous tutorial on the Cornell box and caustics that I made a mistake. Well, at least one mistake that I know of. Um, I'm just going to put image tool here and I'm going to put it always on top here so I can actually see it. Um, you can see that around the bottom of the sphere here um, we have actually have quite a lot of shadowing. Now the reason for that, yes, you would get some light absorption and that is controllable in, in random and from Maya. But the reason we have so much is in actual fact I had um, I had left the shadows to opaque. So I'm just going to show you how to fix that now. It's opaque at the moment. I'll just set it to compute and I'll right click and re-render to fix things for you. I'll just pause this render because um, you have better things to be doing than watching something render. It is just about to start and up. And we're just about back to being rendered. Excellent. Now we can compare these two images by if I actually go to Windows and if I raise all to actually see our, oops, just trying to drag it in from the other window here, um, our catalog, our it catalog. So this is the current view and that's the previous one. If you have a look around the area around here, you'll see a significant difference there. So there we go. That's fixing up that little glitch, which was my error. And if you see any errors, please let me know, and I'll re-record videos and try and fix things in them. Now, subsurface scattering. Let's get on to that. So, I hope everybody here understands what subsurface scattering is, because I, I imagine most of the people who are working in Renderman are not new to, um, to computer graphics. And subsurface scattering is something which has been around for a while, and Renderman was one of the first, and is still one of the best tools for actually visualizing subsurface scattering in um, in 3D. I'm going to start a scene from scratch here. I don't need to save this because I've got lots of versions of it. It's a new scene. Don't save. And I'll start to actually produce a scene here that will work for a test bed for sub subsurface scattering. So let's just make a plane. Lots of planes I've made in my time. Okay. So there's my plane. Let's just see it. Um, I'm going to work with a couple of um, Oops, here we go. I'm going to work with some cylinders, which I'll actually subdivide so they look a little bit better than cylinders. I'm going to um, go to edges, select an edge. I'm going to put in some edge loops. Insert edge loop, one near the top, one near the bottom. And for later on, I actually want to have a look at, um, let's just go across here, all these cylinder. I want to actually put a subdivision in the cap because I'm going to need that at some point. And of course, it gets rid of my edge loops. Damn it! Um, let's put an edge loop in there and an edge loop in there. Unfortunate that, but it happens. Um, so this is my object to start with. Okay, and let's see what it looks like subdivided. Uh, here we go. So yeah. Not too bad. The reason for bringing the edge loops in is so that it doesn't actually become too puckered up here. Okay, I'm going to keep working on it in the unsubdivided mode in Maya. Okay. Right. So, I'm going to have two versions of this. One is going to be subsurface scattering, the other is not going to be subsurface scattering, just so we can see the difference in our lighting. Now, if I just control D on this, I'll make sure I'm in object mode, and Q to make sure we're out of Okay, and move it across. Ah, selected everything. Apologies for my clumsiness. Control D. Okay, so we've got two objects exactly the same. Okay, we're going to start rendering this quite shortly. Now, one particular effect which is really important in subsurface scattering is where we get the terminator between a shaded area and a lit area. That particular line, referred to by some as the, the terminator, and certainly in um, astronomical terms, I believe it's called that. So that line between the area which is brightly lit and the area which is shaded on an object like this as light is incident here and can't actually reach around the corner. In that particular space, if we have subsurface scattering, that line is much less well defined which gives the impression of light penetrating the object, scattering back outwards, and makes it look like the object has depth. Without that kind of effect at the terminator, 
the object appears just to be a surface or to be a surface which is so hard that light cannot penetrate it. Subsurface scattering gives an illusion of depth to 3D, which is one of the great reasons for using it. So let's start off by putting in a light. We need a light to, to show subsurface, to show that terminator line. Um, I'm going to use a renderman from Maya light. So I'm going to use the um, area light. I'm going to work with a very small area light. I'm going to put it a reasonable distance away and make it quite bright. The reason for that is a smaller light will actually have a more defined terminator. Area lights, as they get larger, produce shadows and um, shading, which is softer. And I want to have a hard terminator here. Let's move it over here and rotate it around. And I'm going to set it up a little bit by using the lovely feature of looking through selected all that wonderful distortion. But I'm going to put it over here somewhere. OK, that's probably going to do me about it there. Yeah, tweak it. Panels and go back to my standard perspective camera. Oops, panels, perspective. Did I miss that again? Uh, I've actually just kept that as my camera. Okay, let me just go to panels, new, it's new perspective. Okay, so then I've got perspective one. So that's a separate perspective window. That's what I needed. That was me just glitching out there somewhat. Sorry about that. I'm going to open up my outliner here so I can actually see the area light and grab objects as I need them. Um, I'm going to change the intensity of this to about nine. I may have misspoken earlier and said that the scale for intensity was logarithmic. It isn't an extra fact, it's exponential. So powers of 2 rather than powers of 10. Um, and I'm going to try a quick render on this. And I'm pretty sure this won't work because I know something I've done wrong here. But let's just show it because it's worthwhile. Re-render. Now that's odd. I've not seen that happen before. Re-render. Really odd. Something strange is happening here. Let me just fix this. Render my settings here. Should be display render set to it. Yes. Okay. Re render. Now it's working. Just something glitchy that I probably hit a shortcut key. Not seeing anything. The reason for this I'm using a physically plausible light. I need to use physically plausible materials. Now I'm going to use a default matte material and all these as my starting point. The reason why I'm using matte rather than the um, general purpose surface is because I don't want to have other things like specularity getting in the way of seeing the terminator. So I'm going to select the object, apply the material, select an object, apply the material, select an object, and apply the material. Do a re-render and now we'll see. We can see some objects. Hooray! This was the first mistake which I actually made when I was using Renderman for Maya 5.0, and I continue to make it at times. Um, so let's just get a better view of what we're doing here. Let's zoom in. Okay, to about there. I want to fill up, I want to see more or less where where this is happening, where that uh, line between light and shade is. So re-render. Okay, you'll notice that we're not actually seeing any shadows here yet, and the objects appear to float. And yes, of course, Renderman does shadows, but I haven't actually turned on depth map shadows, and I want to actually have ray tracing in this. So features and ray tracing. Quick render. These renders are incredibly quick. So we've got some shadows. Excellent. Liking the shadows. Now, I modeled these to have subdivision. So I'd like to actually see that subdivision. So under the, um, under the cylinder shape, go to attributes, Renderman, Add a subdiv scheme, do similar for this. Attributes, render man, subdiv scheme, re render it. And you'll see we get a much smoother object. It's also smoothing out any facetness, facetedness which you would have between these objects around here. So it's cool to have. Okay, at the moment both of them are shaded exactly the same way and they will continue to be so more or less. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my history just to clean things up a bit. So edit, delete by type, history, same with this, edit, delete by type, history. Okay, so they're cleaner. 
I get to the material much more easily. Now I like to actually bump up my diffuse, diffuse gain for materials, so I get more of the whiteness in them. Um, less energy is lost when light actually is working with them, so they're more or less the same quality now, 99, and let's change that to 0.99. Okay. Both in the same quality, and re-render. Okay, now we're seeing quite a nice line here between the bright and the dark area. I'm going to rename this one subsurface. Subsurface scattering material. So I know when I'm in it, if, in case I get lost. Subsurface controls in the general purpose map material ships with um, Random and Maya. Not that difficult to understand, but there's a few things which I'll be using in this. There are other controls, but this is specifically to show the kind of methods to get to the results with a softened terminator. First thing to understand is the DMFP, diffuse mean path. It's the average distance, and I'm just reading from what's on the screen, um, that light will travel within the subsurface before scattering. So it's how deep light penetrates before it starts to bounce around and possibly come back out or possibly travel through the object to the other side if the object is thin. Um, so default is set to 1, which is quite shallow because the scale of scene is by default in millimeters for Renderman. Now we can change it to um, centimeters if we want to by changing this value to 1. This is the unit length, but I'll leave it as it is for the moment. And I'd like the light to actually penetrate by about 10 millimeters, about 1 centimeter. I think that's okay. Now, that's setting how far the light will actually go in. The next thing which I'm going to look at is the DMFP color, which is the subsurface filtered color. Okay, this is the way in which I like to control the um, the look of this kind of light dark transition. For this color, I'm going to use a reddish color. Now I'll show you a little bit of a gotcha which I just discovered a few minutes ago. Um, reddish color is cool, but if I go to a totally saturated red, because it is basically saturated entirely, if I go to the RGB, you can see it's all entirely at red. Go to the HSV, much easier to see what's going on. And I do a render here. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, we have to actually show, well, you won't see anything yet. Let me just re-render. You won't see a difference here. No difference at all. Why is that? The next control here, diffuse mix, controls how much of the subsurface light is being displayed as opposed to how much of the diffuse color. The diffuse is handled by the surface color and diffuse gain up here. Okay? So currently, when it's all the way to the left hand side, it's all diffuse color. When I move it all the way over here, we'll get towards the scattered light. Now this is something which confused me for a while. When I render this, it's looking incredibly dark. The reason for this appears to be doesn't actually, that's my Kaspersky jumping up there, doesn't actually like color to be entirely saturated. If I select this and I move from saturation there to slightly further down here to a nice warm color still, and I re-render we're starting to see a very, very different result. Okay, you can see this is incredibly noisy because the next thing we need to control is the number of samples for subsurface scattering. So samples are currently set at 16, which is really, really low. I'll set it to 128. Okay, remember this color, make it slightly desaturated, makes it much, much better. Re-render. Starting to look a little bit like um, there's something going on there, make it 256 and re-render. Okay, we're definitely getting something happening, but it's not necessarily a huge impact. Let's just bump this up to 20 and re-render. We're seeing more. Now, working in millimeters here is okay, but I model the scene in centimeters because that's the way in which I have my Maya set up and it's the default out of the box. So this will dramatically increase the scale. It's going to be 10 times more scale for this re-render. And oh wow, there's a lot of subsurface going on there. 
Hooray, the subsurface works, and you can see what's going on. Um, this is quite dramatic. This is very, very different from this. This is the effect which we expect from subsurface scattering, which I like. It's working. So I'm going to bump this up again to 512, and we'll get a cleaner result. And re-render. Looking much cleaner. Hooray. So this is scattering light, which is coming in incident to it and bouncing back outwards. What I'm going to show you now very quickly is a cool effect which I came up with, having a look at um, actually putting a light inside this object. So I'm going to get rid of this, just Control H to hide it. I'm going to go into my object here and I'm going to select my polygons. Let's hope I do this reasonably easily. Um, uh, Control Z. I'm going to be in polygon. We're going to mode face mode. So let's just select a whole bunch of them and deselect the ones I don't want. Usually much easier. Slightly ham fisted this evening, apologies. Ah. There we go. Deselect, deselect. Deselecting away. Here we are. Almost there. Deselect these. Deselect these. Almost all the ones we need. Now that the bottom selected, I've got one more that I've got to add in, so let me just see if I can add that in. Yes, we've got that in. And I'll move these down. So the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to put a light inside here. Or I'll actually um, scale it first of all. Scale this up to get a thinner wall to it. And I'll extrude this extrude face. Hopefully I've got things that keep together at the moment. I think I probably do. Okay, so I'm going to move this way down here. Okay, so we're now making an object which will still render reasonably similarly. So I'm going to go back to where it was. I was around here, and I'm going to render this. They render. So yes, you're getting some light coming through here, and the forward scatter is slightly different from the back scatter. You can see light coming through here. I'm going to put a light in here turn it into some kind of an Ikea creation, and Ikea owe me money for that. Um, I put in um, an area light again, but I'm going to change the shape of the area light to a sphere, because I want light to be coming out in all directions. And let's just hope I've got it selected. Let's go to my outliner here, area light 2. Let's move it up, move it in, so it's inside here. Let's just see how it's gone. Move it a bit further in. Okay, let's see where we're going in three dimensions. Always working in 3D. So it's in there. Bump the intensity up to two. It's very close to the object, so we should get quite a strong result. And re render. Getting that nice warm glow through it. Still getting the um, the terminator and the softness across there. Let's bump this up to three. Turn up the lights. Okay, getting nicer still. I'm going to actually increase my um, subsurface material samples here again. Oops, object mode. Let's just go to the subsurface material and samples set to 1024. Samples need to be set high because there's a lot of stuff being calculated. So let's just zoom in a little bit closer and re render this. So here basically you have a brief introduction to subsurface scattering. I will at some point get around to explaining the tint, the albedo tint, as well. These are other ways which we can actually control our subsurface. But for the moment, you can actually see what is happening here. And yes, you can produce some quite interesting and nice results, which give the impression that your models actually have depth rather than just being surfaces. So thank you very much for your, your attention. Apologies for the glitches along the way. Um, and hopefully I'll be back with some more tutorials for you in the next couple of days. So thank you and goodbye.